Firstly, Andrew, you managed to get Oliver in uh, yesterday, the last day of the window. Just tell us a bit about him and what you expect him to, to bring to the team. Yeah, pleased to 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 get over Oliver uh, over the line. Obviously, um, you know, it happened late in the piece. We had some moving parts in terms of just making sure, um, you know, we got opportunities for guys elsewhere. And, you know, I was mindful of, you know, in terms of squad numbers, we, you know, I had a sort of clear idea about what I wanted to work with and uh, <coughs> things uh, came together and, and we were able to get Oliver in the last uh, sort of bit of business for us. And, uh, yeah, great to get him in. He's... Um, you know, he's a player who's a little bit different to what we've already got here uh, in terms of his attributes. But, you know, a pro, um, you know, everyone I've spoken to about him uh, from a character perspective says, you know, he's an outstanding uh, person as well as, uh, you know, experienced and, and, and good player who I think will fit in well with us. And, uh, yeah, just rounds off our squad. I think we're, um, you know, coming out of the window now. We, we've got a squad that, I, you know, I think is... Um, you know, strong enough now to, to sort of be able to compete in all, on all the fronts we need to. It's obviously a huge week coming up and I know you'll take uh, one game at a time, but how exciting is it, Ange, to be involved in a week like this for the club, a huge derby match and then a, and a massive Champions League game? I'm guessing there's a lot of excitement around the place. Yeah, there is. Um, it's not unusual for this place, to be fair. I mean, you know, it's, um, you know, there's always big games when you're involved in this football club and, uh you know, from our perspective, um, we've kind of been planning for, for what's ahead, not just sort of this week, over the sort of coming weeks, um, you know, with, with the schedule we've got and obviously competing on, on a number of fronts that uh, we're ready to go. And, you know, the players have been really good uh, <coughs> sort of through this early period in navigating the fixtures and also our training schedule to make sure that, like I said, we're, we're ready for what's ahead. And, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Um, you know, obviously... Um, as you said, it's important to focus on the next challenge, and the next challenge for us is is tomorrow, and uh, that's where our focus is. And you're you know confident with the business that that the club have done that you have a real good resource going into domestic and European competitions for the season ahead. Yeah, as I said, I'm really happy with the business we've done. You've got the chance now to go five points clear tomorrow. How big an incentive is that so early on in the season? Yeah, like you said, so early in the season, zero. <laughs> I mean, you know, what's important for us is, uh, you know, what we got to do is make sure that we, we've grown into the season. We obviously knew it was a bit of a different start for us with one game a week, but I think our performances have been getting stronger every week. And, um, yeah, that's what we're looking for tomorrow, you know, improvement in our performance, improvement in, in the way we do things and, and, you know, play our football and, and uh, you know, overcome whatever challenge we have uh, tomorrow and then, that gets you three points and then you move on to the next challenge. But, um, you know, from our perspective, the incentive is just to keep performing at the levels we have and, and keep improving on them. Hi, Ange. Is, does Oliver go straight into the squad for tomorrow? And can you give us a squad update, please? Yeah, no, he, he'll, he'll need some time, obviously. I mean, he's only had one session with us. And as I said, we, um, you know, earlier in the week, we were in a better position than we were last year when we were throwing guys in. Um, we'll let him get settled and, and see where he's at from a physical perspective and um, and then just sort of uh, make our decisions along the way. Um, <coughs> Squad-wise, tomorrow, everyone's pretty much OK um, after uh, Wednesday night's game. And, um, yeah, I'll sort of make decisions on, um, on sort of squad and, and team tomorrow. What sort of challenge are you expecting from Rangers? Yeah, good challenge. I mean, they're a good side. They were a good side last year, and and you know they've started the season again, you know, strongly in 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 the competitions they've been in. And um, you know, from our perspective, it's about again making sure that we uh, perform at the levels we know we can, and 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 try and exceed them. Um, when we've done that, uh, irrespective of the opposition, we've we've been hard to stop, and um, you yeah, know that'll be our challenge tomorrow. Hi Ange, um, you've had a few previous meetings with Giovanni Van Bronckhorst now. What did, what did you learn from facing him in the past, and how he how he approaches these games? Yeah, I don't, I don't really, you know, I know it's fascinating for other people. I've, I've never really been into the sort of manager versus manager. We don't play the game, so I, I, you kind of assess each team, you know, as a separate entity. And um, and what you find is that you know they always evolve. Um, you know, they've had some changes from last year. They've brought in some new players. They've lost some players. Um, I think their, their their basic structure is is fairly similar to what it was last year. But with 
you know, new additions and people leaving, it just changes slightly because of the, the qualities the players that they've brought in have got. Um, so, again, from us, we don't, you know, we, we, we sort of treat every opponent in the same manner in that we analyse them, we respect them, but ultimately it's about what we bring to the table and how we can play our football and sort of assert our dominance on, into the game. I mean, ask Cal on something similar, but as a coach, how difficult, if, if, it, if difficult at all, do you feel like it is to treat this game like any other game, given the intensity from the outside and what it means to the fans? Yeah, look, I, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't know if, um, yeah, I certainly don't see it as any more difficult. You, you, you understand the, the, the sort of impact it has, particularly, as you said, on our supporters um, in these games, but, um all that's pretty much irrelevant if you don't play well. I mean, I, I've always laid stock in one thing, and that is you go out there and you play your football and, and try and be the best you can be, and all this other stuff tends to take care of itself. I think if you if if you need extra motivation tomorrow than you did on Wednesday night or that you may need on Tuesday night, then you're never going to be successful. Our motivation has to be the same every time we're out there, to, and, and that is to, to be the best we can be, play our football, and, you know... Um, we understand the significance of it uh, to our fans. We understand the significance of it in terms of the league, but that shouldn't mean that we're more motivated tomorrow than we were on Wednesday night. And I haven't seen any evidence of that from the players. You know, they treat every game with equal respect and and you know, equal desire to be successful. Hi, Ange. Do you see much importance in the sort of psychology of winning that first derby match of the season? Um. If I did, I'd be pretty down after the, the first derby last season. You know, maybe would have put out the white towel. So you, you know, you can try and use these things, but ultimately, like I said, what's important is that you recognise that you know there's a game on tomorrow. We've got to play well, and if we win, and we think that that's going to give us some massive advantage, that means that we don't have to play well the week after. Then we got no chance. So you know, it's still very early in the season. There's still uh, Plenty of games to be played, and you know the, you know the, the the whole psychological aspect of it. And like I said, some people use it, and some people you know think it, there's there's merit in it. I just I just don't buy into it. I never have. Like I said, to me, it's not that I don't I treat every game the same for for any other reason that I want to win every game. There's no game out there that I don't want to win. I, or my team to win. So whether that puts us one point ahead or five points behind, or, mate, there's a game to be won, that's what we're going to try and do tomorrow. You touched on Oliver being a, a different option for you. What does he do for the sort of variety and the balance you've got in that midfield area for the season? Well, firstly, you know, he, it's no secret. He, he brings a bit of size to our team. You know, most of our side will struggle to get on any rides at Disneyland. Um, so... You know, some of our, particularly Gavin Strachan's pretty happy in terms of set pieces that we can get some size in there. Um, but, you know, it wasn't just about bringing another big body in there. It's about the fact that, you know, I like that he's, you know, he, he, he sort of plays that uh, single pivot really well um, when needs to, but then can play in a double pivot. You know, he's, he's you know, he's effective going forward, but also can provide shield in, in front of the team. And like I said, when you look at our other midfielders, we, we probably don't have the, the same attributes, but there's a commonality within all of them in that I think they can fit into the football we want to play. You know, they just bring their own sort of qualities that, that they possess into it as well. The, the sort of free scoring style of the team at the moment is receiving a lot of plaudits and rightly so, because some of the football has been electric, but... The guys at the back in the defence are sort of the unsung heroes of this team. I feel like, you know, you've got guys like Carter Vickers. Nothing seems to phase him. I've not seen anything phase him. You've had Jens who's slotted right in, Starfelt, Greg Taylor's playing really well, Jura as well. Um, how much focus do you think is going to be on the defensive side of the game tomorrow as opposed to the attack? Yeah, I mean, Joe Hart will be disappointed you left him out, mate. But uh, he's, Oh, sorry. He's, yeah, he's important. Pass on my regards. <laughs> It's all right. You need a goalkeeper. It doesn't matter how, how good your defence is. Um, yeah, no, look, I, I think, you know, you're right to a certain extent, but I think there's there's also a recognition that, you know, that our defensive record is is strong and has been for a long time because of the collective effort of the whole team. And, and it goes, I think, 
what's underrated is more that, you know, the, the probably our, our defending players and even Joe don't get as much credit for the goals we do score because they come from us being having the ability to play out from the back and, and continually sort of play through teams or, or, or break down teams. Um, and that comes from, you know, the initial instigators of that who inevitably end up, you know, tend to be the, our, our defensive players in terms of the possession. So you know, they play a big part in the goals we score. I know that the sort of focus is on the ones who finish off the moves or have the assists, but... You know, that's a big part of it. And it's the same on, on the defensive side, you know. I think we're, we're strong. We've got a strong defensive record because we, we keep the opposition away from our goal and that's a collective effort as well, you know. And, and I think all those players you mentioned, our defensive players, would be the first to recognise, you know, the shifts that the guys in front of them put in. So, you know, I think for us it's always about how we do things as as a collective when, when we're really sort of on song and, and even last week, you know, or midweek when we're scoring goals, it, it, it's really the whole group, you know, um, sort of contributing to both aspects of the game. And, you know, for us, that's kind of the, the key sort of ingredient moving forward. If we can keep continuing to do that as a group, um, you know, it'll make us hard to stop. Hey, how pleased are you with how the team are performing at the moment? Yeah, look, it's been it's been a solid start, and and I'm pleased because um, you know you can go into a season like this, um, you know, knowing sort of we've only got a game a week, and and you know we've been working pretty hard at training. I didn't really change the team too much, and you know what I've seen within the group is the intensity has remained, it's increased. Um, they've had a really good focus. I mean, you know, if you look at our sort of <clears throat> first five league games, we've had. Aberdeen and Hearts at home, who are you know, both going to, think, do well in the league this year. And we've had three difficult trips to, to Ross County, um, you know, Kilmarnock and, and obviously Dundee United. Now, you know, some of those games haven't ended up being difficult, but on the, from the outside, when you look at it, uh, you go, you know, we, we've got to be, we've got to start the season strong to navigate through that. And, you know, I've just been really pleased the way that the guys have maintained focus through that. And um, But at the same time, I, I still think, you know, there's a lot of improvement in us and, and you know, what's ahead now um, with the number of games we have and the challenges we have, um, I'm hoping that that'll take us to another level. And just, just one final really quick one. How pleased are you with how the squad's looking at the moment now that the window's shut? Yeah, really good. Like I said, we, you know, we, had, we had some objectives going into the window um, in terms of, you know, filling some noticeable gaps we had in our team in terms of the squad. Um, obviously, priority was to, to retain, you know, uh, Jota and Cameron <coughs> and you know we invested a lot of sort of our our you know transfer money into those two so you know post that we had to be really sort of you know clever and and you know it's been great to have Mark Law in the building and I think Michael and uh, Nicholson and, and and Chris McKay and everyone at, at the club have done a, done a fantastic job in in navigating you know what what our needs were um, and at the same time like I said I was conscious that I didn't want to carry a massive squad um, in terms of numbers, and and we've managed to to sort of you know get guys opportunity who who probably weren't going to get a lot of opportunity with us this year, um, and also um, you know create a squad that I think will be uh, strong enough for what's ahead. Oh yeah, and, and uh, there's a great togetherness at the club at the moment, which is down to your leadership uh, on the bus as we travel up on Wednesday evening. Uh, nine changes to the team and. Everybody was just, there's a huge trust from within the fan base in your management leadership. How happy were you with the attitude of the players? Because we were certainly happy in the terraces. Nine players coming in is a huge uh, upheaval, but they were flawless at times. Yeah, no, it's um, it was brilliant. And, and like you said, I think whilst, you know, I'll, I'll sit up here and take all the credit coming my way, it's not just about me. It's, you know, we've got a really good dressing room, um, you know, We've got really good leaders in the dressing room, strong leaders, Callum and, and Joe and others, and, and they've created an environment where, you know, no one is more important than anyone else. I know it sounds a little bit cliche, but, um, you know, within our sort of building here, it's, it's really important that there's respect that you know that when you're coming here to train every day and the levels are so high and you know that some players don't get the reward of playing on the weekend, but will come in the next day and again put in a strong shift there's respect amongst the whole group. And then, you know, I think when players come in, you know, as I've said to them all along, they'll all get an opportunity at some point uh, is to be ready for that. And, and you know, they've acknowledged that, that, you know, that, that they're part of a squad here. We want to 
Now, I want to compete on all fronts. We've got, you know, a schedule coming up that will really test, would test any team. And um, the boys have got a really good attitude about it. And, and like I said, they've just got a real respect for one another. That even the ones not playing last night were really happy that the ones who played did well, oh, sorry, on Wednesday night. And because they all know that, you know, we all share in that success. You know, if we're going to be successful, uh, we want, everyone who plays and puts on that shirt on any given day to do well, even if they're in our position, you know, and I think that's the kind of dressing room that um, the lads have created and it's credit to them. Yeah, the training ground is one thing uh, and playing in, in games in front of, in front of full stadiums is another. So the, the nine players that come in, some of them have started this season already, but some of them haven't. Have they given you food for thought ahead of what's going to be you know, a packed calendar. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think it's food for thought. It just, you know, it, it, like I said, I, 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 I'm really proud of them. And, that you know, that's the kind of um, environment I want, you know, that, that the guys who come in um, are going to put their best forward. They're going to be the best they can be. And, and you know, again, my, my decisions around sort of team selection is always, well, how are we going to overcome the next challenge? You know, which players do we need to do that? And, you know, once we've done that, then it moves on to the next challenge. And again, I'll assess it separately. And I think the players uh, understand that, you know, I, I, I don't have favourites. I don't have, I know, you know, people will always say, well, this is his first 11. Well, it's my first 11 until somebody gets injured or somebody's out of form and then somebody else, it becomes my first 11. You know, the first 11 is the one that goes out there because when you put that shirt on, there's an expectation that you'll perform at a certain level. And, and that's what the guys have embraced here. So. I was really, I was really happy because I've seen them work hard at training, and as you said, it's different training from a game. But you know, they rolled out there Wednesday night, and I thought some of the performances for some of the guys having their first start was outstanding.